Oh, let's talk about some books. So I bought some books in March, as I do every month, and I'm gonna show them to you. You know, whenever I post any book haul, there's always somebody somewhere who always comments and says, Cameron, you have a problem. You buy too many books. You post too many book hauls. But, but, I'm not calling you a but. I'm, I'm saying, but I see the analytics of my videos and I know that people watch my book hauls more than any of my other videos. That means people like my book hauls and I like buying books. So it's a win-win for everybody. So in this haul, I'm going to show you half of the books that I bought in the month of March, which is my birthday month. Obviously, I bought quite a few books than I even usually do. So I'm going to show you the first half of the books, including my newest Nightworms package. We're going to unbox this in the video as well. I also have a bunch of newer books, some vintage teen horror books, which I am so excited for. And then I have a part two that'll go up and it'll feature all of my vintage horror paperbacks. I'm going to start off with the newer books that I received this month. So first up, I have The Book of Yig, Revelations of the Serpent, a Cthulhu Mythos Anthology. So if you like your Lovecraftian horror and your Cthulhu stuff, this sounds like it has that because it says so right there. This was sent to me by David Dodd over at Macabre Inc. And it was mostly just a gift because he sent it along with some other books. It's their latest release and I thought oh, I'll go ahead and add this to my review pile. And it says here on the back, join us for a collection of novellas from some modern masters of neo Lovecraftian fiction. So that sounds really cool. I am like the supreme expert on Lovecraft. So this is gonna be a really good read. I'm kidding, I'm not. I know very, very little about Lovecraft, actually. I still need to read a lot of his work, but this still sounds really fun. And I also have this beautiful book right here. Look at that, so nice. This is Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Chapman. This is coming out from Quirk Books in, uh, it says April, how soon? April 6th, oh, yikes. Okay, I only received this like a couple of weeks ago, so. I did not realize that it was coming out so soon. That did not give me very much time to read this thing. Uh, so I need to jump on this. Here's another gift that was sent to me very, very kindly by a very good friend of mine named Troy. He's also a patron of mine over on Patreon. This is awesome. This is Joe Dante's The Howling Studies in the Horror Film. This was released by Centipede Press. And I believe it's still in print, though it is a limited edition thing. So obviously it's got like all those production stills and essays and all kinds of stuff. This kind of looks like a textbook for horror fans. I love it. And I also have last month's Nightworms books, which I'm going to post my Nightworms unboxing up there in case you haven't seen it yet. We have the latest book from Stephen King called, called Later. <laughs> The latest book from Stephen King called Later. I have heard mostly good things about this, though there have been a few eh, not so great things I've heard, but for the most part, people seem to really like it. And here we have The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This is basically about this old sanatorium that is being renovated into like a, I don't know, like a hotel, I think. Yes, it is being renovated into a five-star minimalist hotel. And then of course, all the people get snowed in and lots of spooky stuff happens. So that sounds really good. I hear this is mostly a thriller, not really so much of a horror novel, but I'm still very much intrigued. Next up, I have a gift that was sent to me by like my very best friend in the entire universe. This is Silent Night, Deadly Night, the coloring book. Silent Night, Deadly Night is one of my favorite horror films ever, especially one of my favorite uh, holiday horror films. It's just so insane. And this coloring book is, Amazing. It says a big, naughty activity book. Games. Coloring. Punish. So good. I also got the latest issue of Fangoria in the mail. So it features, of course, Godzilla vs. Kong on the cover, which I haven't watched yet, though I do have HBO Max now, so I'm going to be watching that this weekend. I also received this book as a gift from a patron. This is Meat by Joseph DeLacy. Actually, after I received this, I heard some very not good things about Joseph DeLacy. Apparently, he was harassing people on Twitter or something. I, I don't know. I'm not on Twitter for that reason, actually. I mean, I have a Twitter account. I'm just taking a break, you know, 
giving it some space because there are people like this and I just can't deal with it right now. I still am interested by the book just as a book on its own. Like if I didn't know anything about Joseph DeLacy, I would be very, very interested in reading this. And I still probably will eventually. I just probably won't give him as much publicity as I would for other authors and other books. But seriously, thank you so much to everybody who sent me gifts this month. That was so kind of all of you. Definitely didn't have to. Uh, just a simple happy birthday is totally fine by me. But the fact that some of you went out of your way to actually send me stuff, it's very humbling. So thank you so much. All right, before we get into the vintage young adult horror, I'm gonna break into my Nightworms package because I am so excited to see what books are in here. As I said, still not on social media. I know, I keep saying I'm gonna come back soon and I am gonna come back soon, I am. In fact, I have almost come back several times and then something came up and I'm like, you know what, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. So I will, I promise, eventually. Anyway, what I was saying is I'm not on social media so I've not been seeing all of the Nightworms spoilers. So I have no idea what's in this box, all I know is that the theme is We Are the Weirdos, which is obviously a play on The Craft, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. So good, and I am beyond excited to see what's in here. Probably some witchy stuff. Wow, looks like there are three books in here, one of which is a hardcover. So that's exciting, but of course, we need to break into the goodie package first. I always save the books for last. It's funny, ever since I was a kid at Christmas time, I'd always save the biggest package for last because obviously that's the best, right? So I'd save that one for last and I'd open all the smaller ones first. We gotta end on a high note, obviously. All right, so here we have our bookmark, which is designed by the Inksmith. It says, we are the weirdos. Very cool design there. I love these bookmarks. I have an entire collection of them now. I actually use these bookmarks more than I do any other bookmarks because they're just so high quality. They're nice and thick. They just hold up really well. So I really like these bookmarks. Ooh, looks like we have another bookmark. There's a spine right there. It says, expanding the scope of what horror can be and who can make it. This is from creaturehorror.com. All right, so we have a signed book plate right here which is really cool. So it says CMC. I don't know what that is yet, but we're gonna see. Uh, this next one is a book plate from Perpetual Motion Machine Publishing. And it looks like the signature is Todd Kiesling, who I've been wanting to read. Obviously all of the signed book plates are gonna go with the books that are included. We also have this really cool sticker right here. Look at that. That actually gives me a lot of Blair Witch vibes. The pentagram sticker is from Pacific Coast Decals. All right, here we go. We have some Pioneer Joe's Coffee Company. This is Pacific Northwest Trailblazing Favorite Nightworms Kona Blend. So that sounds good. I am always up for more coffee. And we have yet another sticker here. This is awesome. This says Dead Inside. So we've got this casket. I guess actually that would be considered a coffin, right? This is from Maddie Page Draws. Very good job, Maddie Page. I like that design a lot. And then of course we have our spoiler card and on the back of this, there is, there's a coupon code for Maddie Page Draws website. So she has an Etsy store. All right, here we go. Time to get into the books. I'm gonna pull out the hardcover first because it's a hardcover and I love hardcovers. So here we have, that's hilarious. Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McLeod Chapman. Here we have the finished hardcover copy. Awesome, when I read the book, I don't have to read my arc, I can just read the finished copy. That is awesome. Very cool design on the inside. Quirk Books, this is from Quirk Books. They always do a great job. Their designs, their book designs, awesome. All right, and then we have a couple of paperback books in here. So. The First one is, oh yes, yes. Oh, I have been seeing, I've been seeing so many people talking about this book. I have been very, very excited to read it because it sounds awesome. Goddess of Filth by V Castro. I've seen this on so many videos lately. One hot summer night, best friends, Lourdes, Fernanda, Anna, Perla, and Pauline hold a seance. It's all fun and games at first, it always is, but their tipsy laughter turns to terror when the flames burn straight through their prayer candles 
and Fernanda starts crawling toward her friends and chanting in na ooh, oh there's a word um na 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 who and you know what we're just not gonna go there the language of their Aztec ancestors. Over the next few weeks, shy, modest Fernanda starts acting strangely, smearing herself in black makeup, shredding her hands on rose thorns, sucking sin out of the mouths of the guilty. The local priest is convinced it's a demon, but Lourdes begins to suspect it's something else, something far more ancient and powerful. This sounds so good, and look at that. There's that spine. A spine on the spine of the book it matches the bookmark. And one of my favorite things about this book is that it is so short. So this will be a really quick read. Yeah, this really ties in well with the whole uh, We Are the Weirdos theme. Very crafty, very crafty. Those demons, they're really into their crafts. Oh, okay, yep, here we go. We have Scan Lines by Todd Kiesling. So this must be his latest book. It says, in 1987, Congressman Benjamin Hardy III died by suicide on live television amidst accusations of political corruption. Years later, rumors of a recording surfaced among VHS trading groups. This sounds awesome. And urban legend at chat rooms dubbed the Duncan Tape after the deceased cameraman who attempted to sell the video, the rumors allege that anyone who watches the tape is driven to suicide. So we all obviously have some ring vibes in here. For Robbie and his friends, an urban legend is the last thing on their minds when a boring Friday night presents a chance to download porn. But the short clip they watch turns out to be something far more graphic and disturbing. And in the coming days, they'll learn even the most outlandish urban legends possess a shred of truth. This sounds so good. And look, it's short. <laughs> so there you go. That is the April Nightworms package. I love it. So if you would like to subscribe to the Nightworms, you can use my code MOVIE5 to get an additional 5% off your already discounted subscription. I'm going to leave links down below in the graveyard if you want to subscribe, which I recommend doing it if you're able to. I think it's just a fantastic service. All right. So moving on from the Nightworms, we're going to take a look at some vintage young adult horror. These next two books, I was so happy to find. So funny story, I was sitting on the floor of my library one night. Don't ask. It's just how I relax. I look at my books until the anxiety goes away. It works every time. Uh, but I was looking at a couple of books in the Hollow series, and I have the first two books, which are called Horsemen and Drowned. I've been wanting to read the series, but I've, I've always wanted to get the other two books in the series. Anyway, I'm like, you know what? I really need to look these other books up on Amazon or eBay and try to find them. I know they're kind of rare. Guess what? The next day, I go to Half Price Books for my birthday, and lo and behold, there are books two and three sitting on the shelf for me. So here we have book three, which is called Mischief, and book four, which is called Enemies. So I now have all four books in the series, and I'm just really pumped to read them because obviously I love Sleepy Hollow, and I will read anything that has to do with the legend of Sleepy Hollow. So I'm very excited to dig into this series. The next one I have is an Avon Flare book. This is called Overkill by Elaine Ferguson. The Avon Flare books are really hard to find. I very rarely stumble upon them. And whenever I do, I always pick them up. And especially if I see them online, like on an Etsy store or something, I grab them right away because they sell so quickly. So I saw this pop up on an Etsy store and I had to get it. So this is basically about this dancer who starts having these weird dreams about this, this mysterious man. Well, I, I'm gonna read you the tagline. It says, dance my lovely before you die. I think that pretty much sums it up. Next, I have some point horror. So the first one I have here, actually the first two I have are books from the Mutant Point Horror series. This was a UK series. These were never released in the US. So I was able to finally find a couple of the Mutant Point Horror books on World of Books USA was a bit of a gamble. I actually unboxed these on camera. I wasn't sure if they were going to arrive in good condition. This one arrived in like beautiful condition. This is Night of the Toxic Slime. And then I got this one in the mail, Crawlers, which isn't too good. It's actually an ex-library copy, though I was able to get some of the stickers off. I also ordered this one from them as well. This is called Catchman. This is part of the Point Horror Unleashed series, yet another UK series that we did not get here in the States. I was really happy to get this. It was listed in like new condition and it did arrive 
in like new condition as described. So I was really happy about that. And I bought one more Point Horror book from them. This is the Point Horror Diane Ho Special Edition hardcover. This includes three books of the Point Horror series that are written by Diane Ho. So we have The Fever, Funhouse, and The Invitation. And I'm just really happy to have some Point Horror in hardcover. This is volume two. There are actually three of these. And the first one is an R.L. Stein hardcover edition that has all of the babysitter books. So I really, really want to find a copy of that. Next, I have a Christopher Pike hardcover edition, which I was so happy to find. I found this at Half Price Books for super cheap. And his books are actually really hard to find in hardcover. They're hard to find in paperback as it is. So the fact that I could find a hardcover edition of one of his books was really cool. And I have a couple of Fear Street Collector's Editions. These were published in the late 90s and they're actually really rare. They go for pretty high prices online, but I always have my eyes out because you never know when a inexpensive copy is gonna pop up. So this is the Collector's Edition number seven, Deadly Games. And this includes the fire game, night games, and a truth or dare. Just look at that unblemished spine. Love it. And uh, we also have collector's edition number 11. This is 99 Fear Street, The House of Evil. It has all three books in that series. And this one's in also very, very nice condition. All right, we have a couple more books here. This one actually isn't a vintage book. This is the newest Goosebumps Slappy World book. So this is book number 13, Monster Blood is back. And there hasn't been a new Monster Blood book in a long time. I actually really like Monster Blood. And I think that it would be the perfect way to tie all of the Goosebumps books together. Like the thing that makes Slappy come alive is Monster Blood or, uh, the, the haunted mask, it has um, an ingredient that is monster blood. Like it'd be so easy to just make monster blood the thing that connects all of the Goosebumps monsters. I don't think Arl Stein has really caught on to that. It would be a really good twist, I'm just saying. We also have Give Yourself Goosebumps. This is number 16, Secret Agent Grandma. This was sent to me by a viewer. I was so, so kind of her to do that because this was one of the few Give Yourself Goosebumps books that I was missing. So very, very happy to have a copy of that, finally. I also ordered a copy of Shivers, book number 34. This is Weirdo, Weirdo Waldo's Wax Museum. That is a mouthful right there. The Shivers series, I grew up with these books. I really enjoyed them. In fact, there was a time when I liked the Shivers books just a little bit more than Goosebumps because these were for hardier kids. I don't know, Shivers just seemed a little darker, a little more niche, you know? Nobody was really reading them except for me, but there were quite a few books in the series that I wasn't able to get because toward the end of the series, the books started becoming a little less popular. There just weren't as many printed. Like this one right here, book 34, didn't get a very high print run. So I wasn't able to find it before. I finally found a copy on eBay that was super affordable. So I snatched it up. If you haven't checked out the Shiver series, I recommend it, especially book number 10, I believe, which was called Curse of the New Kid dark. So dark. Weird. I can't believe that book was written for kids. Next, I have a few nice spooky ghost story books that I found at Half Price Books. So we have more haunted house stories. I actually have the first one of this, so I can complete my set now. And I have a couple of Daniel Cohen books. I actually read a ton of his books growing up. He wrote all kinds of true ghost story books. So we have the world's most famous ghosts. I love this cover. It's so good. They just, they don't make covers like this anymore. And then this one's called Great Ghosts. Again, fantastic cover art. And I also found one of the books in the Spine Chillers series. This is book number one. This actually came out before Goosebumps, believe it or not. And that is all for the horror. And now we are getting into the Babysitter's Club and Sweet Valley books. I'm gonna start with the Sweet Valley ones first. I only found two. These are a couple of the Sweet Valley Kids books. So we have number five, Jessica's Cat Trick, and number 17, Caroline's Mystery Dolls. I told myself I wasn't interested in these Sweet Valley Kids books before. I was mostly just leaning towards the Sweet Valley High books, but you know what? I'm still gonna pick them up because why not? And then I also found several books in the Babysitter's Little Sister series. Again, I told myself I wasn't gonna collect these and suddenly I am, so here we are. So I have Little Sister number 88, Karen's Puppet Show, Karen's Unicorn, this is number 89, number 90, Karen's Haunted House. This is the one that I'm most excited to read, obviously. And then we have number 92, Karen's Sleigh Ride, and number 120, this is 
Karen's Easter Parade. And <laughs> this cover cracks me up because it reminds me of those old like vintage photos of, you know, parents taking their kids to see the Easter Bunny and the kids just crying their eyes out. Karen looks like she's about to burst into tears here. All right, thank you all so much for watching this book haul. I will be back for part two, where I look at all of my vintage horror paperbacks very, very soon. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later, creeps.